Hey guys, and welcome back to our show. We got a great one lined up for today. And so before we get going, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get all the latest content and updates from our channel. Now, last week we had our uh, April session of STEAM School, our boiler safety and operations course here at our Newport News facility. And so I want you to hit that subscribe button so you can be sure and stay in, in touch with us and see when our upcoming dates are. Now today we're talking all about uh, boiler tuning and your combustion tunings in your plants and we're doing it right now. So guys, there's nothing like springtime, cool mornings and goblin turkeys. What more could you ask for? As the spring temperatures start swinging more and more and we're headed towards summer, oftentimes it's a sound idea to perform a combustion tune. So with the complex controls and equipment on modern burners and the requirements for higher efficiency and lower emissions, it's important to not only monitor the combustion regularly, but to also ensure that proper tuning intervals are being met. You see, as the ambient temperatures make their biggest changes in the spring and the fall, this can throw the burner's fuel to air ratio off due to the air density. Of course, every climate is a bit different and some facilities may very well never see these heavy temperature swings. It's still, however, best practice to check the burner's tune at set intervals. This will ensure that your boiler's combustion is performing at its best efficiency. In a previous video on combustion, you can see quickly how even a slight change in the burner's air supply can starve it of these air requirements. The results are near instant change into a reducing flame that essentially is consuming but not burning the same amount of fuel as the efficient flame. This unburnt fuel is a gateway to all sorts of fireside problems within a boiler, namely sooting. When soot begins to accumulate on the fireside surfaces, there is a near immediate reduction in the heat transfer, stack temperatures increase, and then further fireside damage becomes imminent. So when having a combustion tune performed, it's first important to understand that tuning is not a guessing game or trial and error. If a technician shows up without a combustion analyzer and not asking for the burner's factory data, you may want to ask them to just hop back into their van. Now factory data may not always be available, but with modern burners, it typically is, it is available through your representative or the installing contractor. If a technician does not have the proper qualifications and experience to tune that specific piece of equipment, then the results will likely be a burner that's even further out of tune along with the cost of the service call. So like most equipment, burners come in a variety of configurations and features from a simple on-off linkage driven burner to a more sophisticated parallel positioning system with software driven burner management systems. These systems depend on programming within their appropriate software to build the firing rate curves and tinkering with these are strongly discouraged. Once these curves are set by the appropriately trained technician, they should only be tuned and adjusted by likewise qualified personnel. Certain functions within some of these burner management systems can essentially even lead to a lockout requiring complex factory technical support. For this reason, many of these systems have password protected interfaces, which limits the functions and mitigates this harmful tinkering. Parallel positioning systems will typically include the burner management hardware, which is essentially the brains of the operations. So through an HMI or touchscreen, numerous servos can be commissioned into the curve, which may include fuel valves, air, and FGR. Obviously, these systems being more complex will be more complex to tune. The good news is these type systems do by reputation hold their tunes better because of fewer moving parts and a direct coupling to the actuator which then lessens the linkage slop or hysteresis as it's called. So regardless of the age of the burner, the boiler, and the simplicity or complexity of the system, there are few, if any, manufacturers, installers, and service companies that would not recommend regular tunings for this equipment. Now with regards to the tuning, the boiler should be tuned at its peak efficiency at the firing rate which it sees for the majority of the day. Their entire curve from low fire all the way into high fire should be evaluated and tuned along the way. During a tuning, the boiler's pressure control should also be evaluated to ensure that the set points have the proper differentials. A boiler that is short cycling is not only less efficient, it can also lead to thermal shock and of course excessive wear and tear on the boiler. Once tuned at normal operating pressure, a boiler should have a stack temperature around 50 to 100 degrees above the boiler's saturation temperature. Higher stack temperatures could indicate fireside or waterside problems like soot or scale and should be inspected prior to putting the boiler back into service. The best method for these steam boilers is to perform your annual open, clean, and close along with biannual tunings. Now, some operations may call for frequencies that differ from this. However, this is good practice to keep your boiler's efficiency at its peak. 